Are you having trouble painting skies in your oil paintings? Well, let's head up to the studio. I'll show you how I do mine and what colors I use. Welcome back to the channel. Thank you for joining me. If you're new watching for the first time, thank you for joining us. And if you like what you see here in this video, consider subscribing. Hit that bell notification to be alerted to when I post new videos. So in today's video, what we're going to do, we're going to be uh, working on the sky. And in a moment here, I'll lay out the palette of what we're going to use and we'll go over the colors. The palette I'm going to be using from left to right is Flake White, Ultramarine Blue, Cobalt Blue, Cad Yellow Pale, Cad Yellow, Cadmium Red, and Cranacridone Red. Okay, this session is going to be about just working on the sky and tying it in with the uh, edges of the trees a little bit, covering up this uh, little adjustment I made in the last video. I'll leave links to uh, how I started this piece. There were two other videos ahead of this that uh, showed the progression of this. But today it's going to be about uh, how I paint the sky and uh, go from there. Okay, now we're just going to mix up some uh, paint here. Could be mixing up the flake white and some uh, cobalt blue to start. Starting with getting some blue, adding the white into it. And now we're going to take some of this and scumble it over the layer which has the original layer in the sky of the quinacridone magenta that I blocked in with. So let's get this scumbled over. And I've got some darker tones I can adjust uh, more later. But let's work on that and go to the sky. Okay, let's get some paint scumbled on. I'm going to be using a uh, Rosemary and Company ivory pointed round synthetic. And Got a little liquid already mix in there. I'm just putting in a little bit of terps into the mixture, cobalt blue and some flake white. And I'm just looking to scumble the paint on, letting some of that underpainting show through. And as I get this all covered with the scumble cobalt blue, then I'll decide how much I want to cover up more and make more opaque to give some ethereal quality to the sky and some different variations in tone. There is no clouds in the sky. Even if there was, I, I would edit them out because it's about the whole painting, not just the uh, sky. I don't want the sky to detract. I want it to support the idea of the painting. And kind of a mid value right now and I'll have room to push and pull for light tones, darker tones, however I might want to proceed. And adding a little bit of the turps, like I said, will give, with the liquid, give a little more flow. I don't want it too wet because then it's the scumbling effect is going to be reduced. So let me get this covered and uh, I'll get back to you. Okay, so I have this sky blocked in. I'm going to try to get the camera close here and show you how it's scumbled and you can still see the pink through the sky tone. And I'll build on this some more. Some parts will be more opaque. I'm going to get a mixture of some ultramarine blue and do the same thing again. So I have an intermixing of different tones of blue. I think I'll add interest to the sky. All right, now we're going to get some of the uh, blue that I mixed up into overlaid with the cobalt. Not covering up, I'm dancing around in between. So I have some variations in blue. Just think it would make it more, it's going to make it more interesting. 
using a little bit of thicker strokes to start suggesting leaves in this tree. And just a little more defining of the edge of leaves in the trees. Not looking for too much definition right now. Getting there, getting some activity. We're going to pan out here in a moment so you can see how it's going to look from a distance. I am stepping back a bit and looking. Okay, so now what I'm going to work on, I have the uh, two tones of blue in the sky. What I'm going to do now is take the Cronacridone Red, mix that with some white, and uh, apply that in the same manner, a little more strongly in some areas than others, and uh, give more variation to the sky. And But subtly, very subtle, the values are going to be very close together. Now what I've done is i mixed up a little bit of the Cronacridone Red, very strong color, Mix it with just a hint of the ultramarine blue and flake white. And now I'm going to use that to intermix in the sky like I did with the other two blues. And that should polish up the sky enough and then I'll adjust it for value with some uh, white only. The mixture has a bit of the uh, liquid in there. I've added just a bit of terps again. I don't want it runny, I just want it workable. And now we'll add some interest. Just some variation. And it's going to mix with the blue layers of paint. And I'm taking, uh, I have a rag off scene here, just a paper towel in my hand that I'm dabbing as it intermixes with the blue and I'm just judging how much I want it to intermix with the blue before I load up again with the uh, light tone of pink. As I go down out of uh, scene from the camera here I'm wiping wiping on my paper towel before I go back. I was wiping off and I'm going back to the pink Very kind of dry paint going into this, uh, these other layers. Not worrying too much about that power pole. I'll reestablish that so I can pull off any little bits of paint with a damp brush, clean brush, and clean that up a bit. And then when I paint it over it later, it'll be fine. You notice I keep going out of the frame with my brush because I'm picking up more of that pink paint. Just trying to make the sky interesting and slightly building up the layers now. You still see some of that Cronacridone magenta from the original base tone though. So I'm going to get this layer on and then we'll step back and take a look from a distance at the painting. Okay, now we're going to do a little slow pan to show you the sky here. You can see some of that uh, Cronacridone magenta poking through. But you see how interesting sky is. Now let's go to a distance here and I'll show you. Okay, you can see how the sky is more interesting when you have uh, several layers on there. Basically I created an impressionistic kind of sky and I think it's going to complement nicely the uh, structural strength of the uh, strong angles of the buildings. OK, 
Okay, now that I got the sky pretty much going along here, I'm going to work on the base, do a little another layer on the uh, trees right here to integrate the edges of the trees with the sky. So there's a little more softer effect and just a little bit harder in spots. And then as the painting progresses and you get the stronger angles here in the foreground, that should give a nice sense of distance. So let's do that. Now what I'm going to be doing is just moving over the piles from the original sky color and to give myself more mixing room. And I just scoop it up with my palette knife, wipe it off, scoop, wipe it off, scoop, wipe it off. And then I take this nice little device. It's actually a window scraper. I use these all the time. I love this. I don't get the cheap plastic one either. Get a nice metal one. And I find it better than uh, scraping with a pellet knife. I even have one in my plain air box. So you can just scrape, cleans it up super nice. And if you were concerned about any residue after this, you can just take a damp paper towel with barely any turfs on it and give it a wiping. But what you can also do is just take your a paper towel and you can just buff out that area. And now I have a clean larger mixing area and I've saved these paints to uh, potentially use as I do the trees that we talked about and uh, needing to go back and forth with the color. It's useful is I've mixed up a little of the cad yellow pale with a little bit of white and rather than pull more pure blue into this mixture because I knew I was going to have a little white in it anyway. I took some of the cobalt blue from the sky tone just a little bit. I picked up a bit and then I mixed it in to my mixture that I pre-mixed with the yellow and white. And that gives me a nice green to work with to start. I'm just going to compare it, reach up and compare tone. Yep, I'm going to like that and I'm going to scumble that over the previous layer. So let's go back up to the canvas. Now having this lighter tone and being careful how I apply it, there's subtle value difference obviously between the previous layer and what I'm applying. The previous layer was a little darker value and also a little more subdued. This is a little more saturated and adds a nice element to suggest subtle leaves on the trees without painting each one because you obviously would not want to do that and letting it dance and tickle into that paint that I have and it's intermixing with the blue a bit and I'm continuing to um, use that to my advantage as I go out of scene probably I'm not sure if I have my camera angle right come back in Re-establish some stronger saturated points. A little more here. And if you feel it's too much, you know, this is a layered painting. This is going to be a process. And don't think when you're up close to the piece and you think, oh, that's too strong. I don't like it. When you step back which I'm going to do momentarily. I'm just dragging the dryish, very kind of dry paint across and stopping. Now here's what we got with just a little bit of the paint on there. I'm going to pan in just a bit. Now of course I mentioned at the beginning that this is going to be pretty much the uh, sky painting, uh, uh, the issue with the sky today, working on that and integrating the edges of the uh, trees along with that while the paint's wet. I do want to take advantage. Uh, I want to show you an example, even though I'm doing this video for you guys. I normally would take that color and see where I can use it somewhere else in the painting. That's what makes your painting efficient. You can, uh, you know, some people think, oh my gosh, that must have taken you so long. Well, depending on how you paint and how you dance around the canvas to utilize uh, the effort you're putting on, you're mixing up a color, it's like, oh, I can use that color over here in this part of the painting. So you want to take advantage of those aspects and uh, help you out, especially if you're like most artists, uh, myself included, you're working uh, an actual job, you know, to help pay the bills and uh, you only have a limited amount of time to paint, you want to make use of it. So 
Just a little tip. I want to utilize this color. It's right in here. I want to put a little pop like sunlights on there. And I'm just going to add a little bit of more cobalt blue. It's still going to pop a bit. And I'm just going to drag this like a little sunlight's raking across the lawn. Not looking for too much strongness right now. Just punch it up a bit like that. And I'm just going to use a little, start building up some layers for this grass to add interest while I have the paint mixed up. Utilize it to my advantage. I'm going to make just a little stronger light there. And from a distance, it kind of blends, but later on when I show you some close-ups, you'll see how separated and how interesting abstractly the paint looks up close. So that's going to give your viewer as they step back, they see realism. As they get close, they see abstract. Makes it a little more interesting. Now I just want to show you real quick what I meant about cleaning up. If you have an element painted already, and as I was painting the sky, I got a little into my power pole. Big deal. Got terps on my brush. Pat. Terps. Pat. Get it damp. Wipe. Wipe on your paper towel. Stroke, wipe, stroke, wipe, and continue until you feel you need, until you, you got it back to where you need it. Doesn't need to be perfect because once we do another layer over the power pole, we'll be a little more controlled in our technique and uh, have that completed. And also, of course, there's going to be power poles coming off of these poles, but I'm going to put those in towards the end. And I mean power lines, not power poles. There's going to be power lines off of the power poles. Okay, now we're going to be mixing up a little more of a different shade of blue with a little ultramarine. And I'm going to steal some of that original mixture, put it into the green. A touch of cat red. And I just want to have an interesting kind of coolish green. You might think, oh, but you added cat red. It's, it's not going to be cool, but it's all in relationships and how visually it looks compared to. So I'm going to use that to scumble over uh, a layer over to the left side of the painting. In the distance, there's a section of trees. So we'll get another layer of tone on there, of color. And let me show you that. Okay, we're going to be uh, working on putting that tone that I mixed, the color. Scumble over what we have here and I had rinsed this brush out feels a little wet to me I'm just pinching it in a paper towel careful with your brushes you don't want to really abuse them by wiping them dry them off really twist and wipe twist and wipe keep those bristles uh, in good shape very dry paint letting it dance with that tone of the sky and again, I'll show you close-ups as we get towards the end of the video of what that's doing to the edge with the sky. And it's going to intermix with that lighter tone of sky. So when you're going into this darker area, be careful. You want to wiping out the paint, taking that dampness from the turps, letting it soak off the paper towels, which I like bounty. And also, if you saw the previous video, some blue shop towels are nice. Very absorbent. Watch out for cheap paper towels that shed on you, on your painting, wet paint. And this will be built up more also later. Naturally, you can do a painting, building it all up at one time, like I do with plein air work. So it's just, this is another way of working, of layering. 
And this is why I'm doing this video to show you some different techniques of building your painting. If you don't have the confidence to just go for it like in the field, outside, making decisions that and knowing what steps to take and what sequence to achieve an effect. So, and right now this is kind of seems like a, a dull flat gray, but we'll be, I mean a green, but we'll be introducing some tones in there now that I got a layer on there. Don't worry about cutting this too much and covering some of that. We'll be establishing that at a later time. Now I'm taking a little bit more ultramarine blue, a little more cad red, getting a darker rich green. And now pick up more paint, trying to create some suggestive shadow areas. A lot of times when you're painting realism, you can really, if you got your light, dark, and mid-tone as a starting point, boom, you, you really got a sense of realism right off. And then you can nuance in between those steps even more to get a very highly polished, realistic painting. It's up to your personal uh, aesthetic. So, now I'm just going to, now that I feel I'm done with the base layer of that, I'm going to get a little more interest in the edge here. You're not looking to define leaves though because you wouldn't see individual leaves that far away. There's also a little section I missed for the lighter tone trees on the right. So I'm going to pan over a bit and show you that. Oh, it is in scene here. Neglected that by accident. It's right in here. Scumble. Not worrying about detail and it's a little different look than over to further right but that's because we had a little bit of adjustment in the previous painting we were going over but we can build on that more later one thing I am going to do also is a little bit of sky hole and when you make your sky holes into like a tone like this you want Whatever color you have here, you want it probably two steps darker at least. Because if you don't and you put in the same color you have in the sky, it's going to appear like it's pasted on because it's surrounded by this darker value. So you can see, I'm not sure if the camera's picking up, but this value is a little bit darker than the sky. So this will be suggestive of sky holes. And if you feel they're not light enough you can always lighten them but it's a little harder to do that in reverse getting a little of the original sky tone making sure my brush isn't too wet and that my shapes are not too regular obviously and it doesn't have to be perfect you can always build on it more later. It's just to give some foundation work for future layers. Kind of like in that, there's one little spot that looks unnatural right here. And let it intermix with the green a bit. It's okay. Like in that, there's only one spot. Right? There. And while I have that lighter tone paint and the smaller brush, back to efficiency of painting, using that in other areas where I can take advantage while I have the paint on the brush. I'm going to do that over a little to the right here. Let's pan. start defining a little bit over here using a little lighter tone a little bit of white in my blue I'm 
just adding a little interest. And then we'll wrap up this session of working in the sky. Some sky holes are a little more prominent on how I apply them as opposed to others that intermixed with the green a bit and are a little more subdued. Again, there's elements that we don't like. We can uh, tone them down later on in other layers. Better to not go too crazy. You can always add more. So that's a good start. And we're going to be uh, finishing up this video here in a moment. And I'd like to pretty happy with how everything's coming along. Okay, now uh, to start, you would do this with all the brushes that you use in your painting uh, session. And of course, uh, for a lot of you probably watching that have been painting, you, you know all this, but here's how I clean my brushes. I have these nice containers that are filled with uh, turps, and they have their nice little uh, strainer mechanism in there. And I swish the brush around. Sometimes I'll just dip it. And on a paper towel, if, if the brush is very heavy with color, I'll dip it, let the color come out a bit, blot. So I'm not swishing around too much with that thick color in there. And once it starts getting reduced, like there's hardly any paint in here, then I can swish around a bit. And there's a little bar going across that, can't, that little mechanism. And that's what I use to squeegee off the excess terps blot on my towel right here and these towels are like terry cloth they're very handy very absorbent and then again repeat and i'm twisting i'm rotating a brush around as i do that I, I never do this on the on the uh fabric on the uh, towel it'll shorten the life of your brushes be very very careful. And then if you need to, if you feel it's going to be a while before you come back to your painting, you can rinse them off with um, some soap and water now. But that's pretty much all I do. I've been doing that for years and the brushes have lasted me quite a long time. Now for the palette. I have a Masterson sealed palette. So I can leave uh, these workable piles here. If you don't feel you're going to come back to the painting for several days, because I did mix liquid into there. Uh, they will get uh, tacky and probably dry on you, even in, even covered and sealed. But I'm going to leave them because I plan on coming back to this in a couple days. But the greens here, I can take those and put them in a place that makes sense. I usually put them, try to put them over to the side here. I didn't do that with these, and that's okay because I'll be probably doing a few more scumbling layers on the sky in those couple days later here. Now I got the initial paint off. I take my scraper I mentioned earlier. Wipe. One pass. Wipe. One pass. Wipe. One pass. Wipe. One pass. Wipe. Throw that away. Clean paper towel. Just a hint of terps. Wipe that up, turn the paper towel, dry part, and you are all cleaned up for next time. Be sure to take out your little cup here so it doesn't flip around on you when you seal your palette. And then you just, like Tupperware, you put your lid on, get to one corner, lift it up a bit, and squeeze all the air out. So I'm going to do that, and this will conclude the video. Okay, so here's the painting after the session here. Kind of liking that sky quite a bit, and it has a lot of interest in it. And it leaves me room as the rest of the painting develops to uh, enhance certain parts with more color or make it a little lighter value in spots. We'll see how the painting progresses and as other areas start talking to one another. Okay, let me uh, show you some little details here. See how my new little camera picks up detail, but this is what we got for some edges along where the sky meets the trees and you can still see a little bit of the original tone in the sky also. 
So stepping back, you can see how it's all going to be a, a nice package, I think, when it's done. And uh, I'm pretty happy with this session. Okay, everybody, this is going to conclude this session. I want to thank you for joining me. I'm pretty happy with the outcome, and uh, I'll do a few more sessions on this, obviously. And when I come to interesting parts, I'll film it for a video and show you how I do it. And uh, probably while this is drying, I'll, I'm hoping to get out for a little plain air painting. Uh, we had a little nicer weather come along here in Maine, so I want to take advantage of it. But again, if you're new to the channel and you were watching my channel for the first time, let me know what you think in the comments, and I invite you to subscribe. And if you do, hit the bell notification be alerted as to when I post new videos and keep up with all that. And everybody can follow me on Facebook, Habowski Studio, or my Instagram, uh, at Habowski Studio. Until next time, bye.